This is my studio where I carve my work. The tools and carving table come from other carvers. They're long gone, but their spirit remains. I am just beginning to carve listener three. The listener three, her face peers out from her forest form. Most of the log is left in its natural state. And so if we pay careful attention, we may hope to listen to her forest sounds like one might hear the ocean sounds from a seashell. Emergence. Some common kind of morph is happening in this walnut wood carving. A spiritual transformation, perhaps? The figure once was, or may be, the beginning of a new inner self. Immigrant series, all carved in relief, trapped in the wood. My trip to Ellis Island, listening to the travelers' stories on the ships, inspired me to create their fear and hardship on their journey to this country. Travel by starlight. Often I create a half-size maquette in plaster and use calibers to transfer measurements to the wood. However, these plaster models became its own creation. Each figure gradually disappears, as often felt by immigrants. Dangerous terrain. I had to create a dimensional torso and a three-inch plank of walnut. The struggle was definitely worth the effort, the front having to make sense with the back and read as a torso. That was the challenge. It's a man's world. This series are all carved from different woods. Sizes vary as well as expression. The male is perched rather precariously on top of the stable foundation of the female figure. Ninja Turtle Totem. This eight-foot carved basswood totem was created as part of an art installation that describes the future of mankind, first shown at the director's choice at Silvermine in 2009. The listener, carved in mahogany, the seven-foot listener was dropped into Topstone Pond in Reading, Connecticut to create a short film. She glistened with radiance as she glided in the water with grace and serenity, a dream of peace. I also do commission work. This World War II hero was installed in Veterans Park, Stanford, Connecticut. It was modeled in clay at my studio. The image you see is at the foundry, cast in wax. I am doing a final wax retouch before it is cast in bronze. Here is the installment, the bronze statue on its granite base at the Veterans Park in Connecticut, Stanford, Connecticut, which sadly now is being renovated and all sculptures are in storage. One must remember nothing is permanent. Commissioned portraits are also a part of my professional life. This Japanese general, born in 1889, was by far the most difficult as my resource was just one view from a faded old photo. The granddaughter, Japanese, and I had a really serious language problem, but you know what, in the end, she loves the portrait. The source, an invitational and quite an honor. This lovely brown, bronze fountain is my creation. Looking for quietude and richness of form and abundance which mirrors the beauty of Brook Green Gardens, South Carolina, in which she is permanently installed. In this studio shot on the wooden board is my prototype of the 2019 Brook Green Medal, also an invitational and a great honor. It is in clay, later to be cast in plaster, sent to the mint and struck in bronze. This is the medal, front and back, reduced from eight to three inches in diameter. I modeled in low relief a section of my fountain, the source at Brook Green Gardens, and a butterfly lightly settles on her hand by chance. I actually saw this at the garden. The man from Branchville, 
a collaboration installation exhibited in Brooklyn in 2009. This robot, my creation, rests in the fictitious lab of Dr. Ixtan Verton in the future year of 2079. All the artwork is in this exhibit is centered on his findings. The robotic pawns. I created the 12 inch plaster robots, 30 in all. They marched silently in unison in a recent Silvermine Guild show of which I am a member. This piece is also part of the future project, which continues to this day. The title decade, the second futuristic fable, takes place at City Lights Gallery, Bridgeport, Connecticut in 2016. A menacing robot stands guard at the entrance of the exhibit. The story unfolds through the artwork. Today, I am making film to create my story. All of it are my visuals with a narration created by a writer. This set describes a family discussing politics in their living room in the year 3065. Uh, this is another example of my visual that will be in the next film entitled Rebirth. Still in the making, the idea of creating artwork for film is new and exciting. Thank you.